Cars You Shouldn't Buy, Part 2. 11 more cars you should avoid. See Part 1 if you missed it. With car prices being extraordinarily high, we thought it's only fair that you should know which vehicles you shouldn't buy. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. Today, of course, I'm joined by the amazing Elizabeth as we share a second round of vehicles that you should avoid. These are 2020 models still on the lot or available as used cars already traded in. And why? Well, in a very short time, people discovered they didn't like these vehicles very much. And even if the problems aren't huge in the long run, it impacts your resale value. Vehicles depreciate fast enough as it is. Isn't that right, Liz? So totally true. So who wants to add to that problem by buying a vehicle that nobody's going to want later? As our followers know, the Homework Guide channel prepares car buyers with homework and research to do before the sale. We give you great car buying strategies and let you know what to be aware of. Well, who wants to spend all that time and research just to end up getting a car deal that you shouldn't even have? Right. Nobody. As Kevin said, make sure you also see part one of this video and make sure you see the entire list. For as many years as some of these manufacturers have been making cars, you'd think they could get it right 100% of the time by now. Well, that's not the case. Some manufacturers missed the mark by a wide margin. We don't want to see you buy a lemon, so here we go. 11 more cars from 2020 that you shouldn't buy. Let's start with the GMC Canyon. With a base MSRP of 22.2, it seems like a good buy, and it's like the cousin to the Chevy Colorado. The GMC Canyon is a sharp-looking truck. However, if you check out the Consumer Reports page for the 2020 Canyon, you find an unimpressive low reliability prediction. Ouch! Yep, there's a lot of merit to this because there have been a lot of complaints about transmission failures, causing it to slip out of gear, shift rough, and have premature clutch failure, and yet, <laughs> still no recalls from GM on it. Are they just ignoring the problem? I think they are. Then there's the ride. Even if this is intended to be an off-road truck, the ride is bumpy and rough. I get that you feel a few bumps if you're going down a dirt road, but consumers say it's a bit much. So is it like the stagecoach reference you made before? <laughs> <I suppose. laughs> All right, the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Did I say that right? Giulia? Anyway, base MSRP 39345. Our good friends Yuri and Jacob over at the Straight Pipes channel reviewed this car a year ago in July. Well, if you're interested, here's their review here, and we'll put the link in the description box down below. You'll enjoy their channel. Make sure you tell them, hi, from the homework guy. Yeah. Now, on to our thoughts about this car. It was launched as competition to the BMW 3 and the Mercedes-Benz, but unfortunately, it failed to live up to the standards of these two German automakers. Well, they do kind of set the bar high. Mm -hmm. It's praised for its handling capabilities, but gets ripped on for a cramped trunk and very small back seat. Despite all the cool bells and whistles, it never got higher than 17th in the sedan category with JD Power. Keep that in mind because, again, it impacts resale down the road. Onward to the Volvo XC90. The base MSRP is 48350 This is one of those you definitely want to stay away from vehicles. Maybe Volvo will learn a lesson here and do better in the future. Despite all the creative design and spacious interior and that nice third row seating for you families out there, this Volvo fails to live up to the $48,000 price tag. Right. The gas mileage stinks, which is a little surprising given the fact that Volvo claims they'll be fully electric in the future. It drives nice, has good safety ratings, but similar vehicles offer you a lot more bang for your buck. And here's the Ford F-350. Base MSRP, 34600 I have to say that I love Ford trucks, but... The 2020 F-350 already has a recall. Ooh. When you think about long-term maintenance, this isn't a really good sign, more like a red flag. Buyers of this truck have also reported that it feels clumsy, and it's not anywhere near as responsive as Ford's top-selling truck, the F-150. The other thing is, is that the 34000 starting sticker price is a bit misleading because unless you spend 44000 you aren't getting much of a truck. That said, the F-350 isn't a terrible truck and it should have decent resale. However, this is one of those rare times that I'd actually suggest taking a look at the GMC Sierra and the Chevy Silverado if you're in the market for a full-size truck, the heavy-duty truck that is. Surprise, surprise, the heavy-duty GMC and Chevy trucks actually beat Ford out this time. What? Next is the Nissan Armada. The base MSRP is 47,100. You would love the Nissan Armada if you're a fan of luxurious feeling SUVs 
and you love a gas guzzler. <laughs> the Armada got a design overhaul a few years back, and you may have noticed that it looks very similar to the Nissan Patrol. Now, the Patrol actually has a very good reputation among overseas buyers. Unfortunately for the Armada, it doesn't have a lot of off-road capability like the Patrol does. It has decent towing capacity and fairly responsive acceleration, but you'll do better looking at other comparable SUVs. Time for the Volkswagen Atlas, base MSRP 31545 If you recall Volkswagen's debacle with the 2015 emissions misconduct, well, Volkswagen still has issues with trying to rebuild public trust. This offering from Volkswagen is no exception. Almost 500,000 Volkswagen diesel cars were found to have software that could falsify their emission numbers, something the EPA wasn't all that excited about. And as far as reliability goes, well, this vehicle sits in the bottom five in its category. Not all that impressive. Nope. Another Volkswagen, the Tiguan, has a base MSRP of 24,945. This does seem like a decent deal for an SUV, and it does rate a little bit higher than the Atlas. However, it's fairly gutless and has mediocre fuel economy. Despite its weird name, it has been one of the more popular Volkswagen models in recent years. Yet that won't continue to be the case when its reliability keeps plummeting. The best I can say about the Tiguan is that it's comfortable to sit in and has good visibility. But my sofa at home is also comfortable and it's much less than 25000 and there are no mechanical issues. So I'll never spend twenty five grand on something that's just because it's comfortable. Did you just compare the uh, Volkswagen to your couch? Actually, I like my couch a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have the Jeep Wrangler, base MSRP, 28295 I'm a little disappointed here. If the only thing that you're interested in in is doing some off-roading. Well, this is definitely the vehicle for you. It kicks butt when you leave the pavement. We drove the Wrangler and several other Jeeps along with SUVs from all the major companies out there. And I have to tell you that Jeep beat the pants off of all the competition in literally every off-road challenge there was. But for the sake of this conversation, we're gonna assume that you wanna spend some time driving down the pavement each day. And that's where the Wrangler goes from a winner to a loser. It's uncomfortable for longer rides. The stiff off-road suspension makes it feel like a skateboard on the road. And it's just about <laughs> as noisy as a skateboard oh. sitting inside the vehicle. Now, when you throw in low reliability ratings and bad gas mileage and some steering related problems and some tire pressure issues, Ooh, well, that doesn't look good. you'll do more complaining than cheering if you decide to buy the Jeep Wrangler. Dang it. I really like the Wrangler too, but <laughs> I definitely don't like vehicle problems. No. Here we have the Tesla Model X. The base MSRP is 104990 Ouch! Okay, there's some serious sticker shock with this vehicle. There are a ton of SUVs you can buy in this category. That would be better choices. Heck, buy two of them. A word of advice to Elon Musk on this vehicle. You could have skipped putting in the third row seat because it's really only spacious for a cat. <laughs> And unfortunately, the Tesla Model X ranks at the very bottom for reliability in the SUV market. There's problems with electronics, body integrity, and overall finish of the vehicle. And then when you spent $105,000, you'd think you'd get a nice cushy ride, yep. but you don't. Oh. We like most of Tesla's models, but in this case, X does not mark the spot. <laughs> All right, the Nissan Titan, base MSRP, 31785 Well, where do we begin with the Nissan Titan? Bad fuel economy? clumsy handling, the in-dash uh, infotainment system is hard to use. It's supposed to be competing with the Dodge Ram 1500 and the Ford F-150, but both of those trucks out-haul, out-tow the Nissan Titan, and you'd be better off with either one of those trucks. You're better off avoiding this Nissan truck, this go-around. So here's the Fiat 500L. The base MSRP is 22.5. A small car with a bug-like appearance. <clears throat> This, is this like mater as in tomato? No, without like, the two? like squash that bug bug. Yeah. Okay, this was supposed to compete with the Subaru Outback, the Audi All Road, and the Volkswagen V60, but it earned the dead last spot in this category. It's a stiff driving vehicle, has awkward and uncomfortable seats, puts the driver in a strange position, handles and accelerates like a radio flyer wagon, and then as Ouch. small as this vehicle is, the fuel economy sucks. So what's the best part? It also gets very low ratings for safety. Ouch. Take a pass on the Fiat 500L. Sounds like it. Well, that's part two of our 2020 list for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you happen to own one of the vehicles we discussed today, well, feel free to put a comment in the comment section down below and share your thoughts on it. By doing so, 
Everyone becomes a smarter car buyer through shared experiences. If you appreciated hearing our list of vehicles that you probably shouldn't buy, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there. There's a list of options here on the screen and they're linked in the description box below. And if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below and of course on our website. Make sure you visit our website, by the way, all kinds of resources there. No problem if you can't leave a tip though. What's the best way for our viewers to help us out, Liz? Help us get the word out. You want your friends and family to be lucky just like you, right? So put this video up so others can see it. Encourage them to subscribe. Ring that notification bell too so you don't miss a thing. We're here to represent you, the car buyer. And that's exactly what we do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.